The 10 minute drill. This is a big one. Covered by Universal Roof and Contracting. The difference is universal. On 1010XL. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hit it. All right, we're back on a custom tree surgeon's uh, Thursday. We're going to go inside the uh, injury report a little bit later this hour. It's coming up in about 10 minutes, um, maybe a little bit longer. Meanwhile, it's time for the 10-minute drill as we go through some of the, the headlines from around the National Football League and uh, and other you know parts of the sports world. Um, I, I'd like to start in the NBA. And Please before do. Before I describe what happened with LeBron uh, Travel. James, James last night, I'll let LeBron – Tell you in his own words. <laughs> Probably one of the worst things I've ever done in my career. I didn't even realize I did it until halftime, to be honest. One of my coaches showed me. I didn't even realize I did it. I think at the same time, I was watching the underneath play, and KCP and uh, Donovan got into it. Um, KCP started to run, and then Donovan bumped into him. He fell on the ground, and I think I was ready to pass the ball. And my brain just kind of just <laughs> – I just had a malfunction. I really had a malfunction. So, you know, I feel bad for the refs on that one because – you know, they probably get a write-up on that one. That was, that was pretty bad. Is that, and this is a hard question, Dan Hicken, uh-huh. because they are so incompetent, was that the worst missed call in the history of sports? Oh, no. Because of the speed that it was happening at no. and the distance? How do you say no? No, no. How do you have a worse not missed even, call than that not one? Not even the worst travel I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. No, 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 no. LeBron, no. ladies and gentlemen, I, here's what happened. He crossed midcourt. He, you know, they always palm the ball kind of slowly. He palms the ball. He takes, I kid you not, Four short steps. Oh, yeah, he travels. Holding the ball in his hand. Yeah, he travels. And then he turns it back over and keeps dribbling. No call. It was a casual stroll. Yeah. I've it was seen, unreal. I've seen guys go to the hoop, you know, on a breakaway, take six, seven steps, uh, and they miss it. Yeah, so, but this one, because he was so alone yeah. and there was no one around, it was so slow, mm-hmm. I just thought, I don't know how you miss it. No, it's, well, it was bad. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It was, but it wasn't like, it was just, you miss it because it's, because he's got the ball and he's over there. And he's one guy, and there's nine other guys over here, and you're kind of just starting to look over here, I Oh, suppose. Hick, there's a ref standing right, I know, I'm right to, next I'm to, to help. he and the defender. I mean, he's isolated top of the key in a slow part of the game. It, was, it was unreal. But anyway, uh, the bigger story is uh, we, we have, I don't want to say underestimated, we misestimated LeBron again. Last year wasn't that he tuned out and he doesn't care anymore. He realized he had a crap team. Took the year he's off. not going to... Tear his body up for a year. Yeah. He knows there's a plan that'll come together for next season. And the guy's playing like he's 25, Hick. The way he gets up and down. The, his style of play, I mean. Yeah. And the Lakers have responded. They're 19-3. and three. they got the best record in the NBA. And, yeah. And I'm already looking forward to the Western Conference Finals between the Clippers and the Lakers. And Because uh, I'll take a dime bet that's who it is. Oh. <laughs> throwing it out there right yeah, now. Yeah, you, you don't want to take that one. Wow. They're, you're only counting on injury if you take that bet. I, um... I listen. I'm not an NBA guy, expert, or anything, but I correctly forecast the Dallas Mavericks being one of the improved teams, and I feel very good about oh, that. Good for you. Yeah. So that's my NBA nugget of the day. I remember the day we did most improved and unimproved coming up this year in the NBA. <laughs> Bless you. The Milwaukee Bucks are also 19 and three. Yeah, they won. They've won 13 yeah. games in a row. Uh, your Atlanta Hawks took it on the chin again last night. Well, I don't need your updates. Thank you, though. I'm she aware that they're five and seventeen. Well, they play the Brooklyn Nets, and yeah, they lost the one thirty to one sixteen. I believe it's not very good. Well, no, nor are the Knicks, friend. Oh, well, I know that. Okay, you well, told me that your team was going. My team's not at full strength. Eastern well, Conference team, well, Finals, I believe. Never said any such thing. Now you're just being silly. I think that's what you told us. No, no one, no one said that, and they realize that. Do you have a question for me, or do you want me to, to continue to drive this segment? <laughs> Uh, Jameis Winston is the uh, quarterback of the Tampa Bay Bucks, and Bruce Arians was smart, being noncommittal about his future uh, yesterday, uh, because the Bucks are doing okay right now, and he wants Winston to keep playing good. He doesn't want to. He's not going to let up. Of course, he's still being judged. There's no guarantee. But he was asked if he sees Jameis Winston as his quarterback of the future. He said, "Ask me at the end of December." So, well, and you know, the Bucks didn't. Didn't extend Jameis. So this is the last year, and now they can decide whether or not. he. That's a hard one. I, I would say this, and I understand how easy it is to be critical of Jameis Winston. He, his passer rating is 82. He's got 20 interceptions, 22 to 20. Um, He's just one of those guys, Hick, who will just five times a game make a play that, you, you, that only a few quarterbacks can make, a throw that, you know, not many of them are, are pulling off. I. 
And so the concern always is, all right, you can move on from Jameis, and I, I can't blame you, but understand, you know, this is now you got three years of three and thirteen coming. You don't have what's the back? I mean, what's the plan then? Are right, you going right. to start? You know, Justin Herbert next year, year right. one. Yeah. And what does Jameis fetch on the market? Does Jameis start again? That's probably the question. I would say yes. Ask. He will for yes. someone. Yes. I would say yes. Like I would, I told you, uh, my thought is Blake Bortles never starts again. Yeah, I will. That's a for sure. Yeah. Whatever idiot team ever starts him, yeah. will, you know, deserves what they get. Um, but you can argue Jameis statistically is not much better than Blake. I mean, he's got a passer rate of eighty-two point seven. That's with four hundred and sixty-seven attempts. That's not like a game. Eighty-two point seven in today's day and age is like having a fifty back in the day. He's an intriguing guy, though. Oh yeah, yes. And the reason why he's 82.7 is because of all the picks. Um, well, yeah. Well, that's, that's terrible, though. That's why. I understand that. I'm just telling you that's why. I, it's interesting, Dan, to me with Gardner Minshew. I think we are getting to stage two of the young quarterback observation. I'll tell you what I mean. The narrative early in the year is, man, it's amazing how much better prepared and uh, these young quarterbacks are, and they come into the game now as rookies and undrafted rookies, and they're productive and successful. Uh huh. Right. Right. I mean, whether it's Minshew or um, just about any of the Daniel Jones came in and did it right away. We we've had a uh, uh, Kyle Allen. You know, even the 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 Steelers quarterbacks are proficient enough. Right. Now, now we get to the second part of the narrative, and it'll be interesting to see how it, it, it affects Gardner Minshew. Because the second part of that narrative is now as we get this deep in the season, we're starting to learn that uh, when it comes to these young quarterbacks and their success, the NFL also figures them out. Yeah. And so all these fast starts by these young cats, well, they're not quite, you know, dude, Daniel Jones, by the way, injured. Eli will start this week, but Daniel Jones' pace has fallen off. Gardner Minshew, his last start was awful. Kyle Allen isn't the same you know, magical quarterback he was when even the Jaguars saw him. So um, how do you think right now that Gardner Minshew fares in these last four games? Uh, and, I, and I don't mean wins or losses. I just mean, is he, you know, do, are we going to have, will they have a touchdown in, in passing every game? Is he going to lose a game 26-3 like they did at Houston? And if he does, what does that do to the whole offseason? I'm intrigued by how this whole thing shakes out. Is Nick Foles on the roster next year? I'm going to ask you 10 questions. You answer them all. Well, at this point, I'd say yes on Nick Foles. Yeah, I would too. I say Minshew does pretty well. Uh, hopefully enough to keep you optimistic about this um, about this football team. That's that's the important part. Uh, and uh, But they could easily have a game where they get whooped 26 to Six or whatever, yeah, because they're not very good. Um, Be so. concerning considering who's on the schedule, though, which is what was so concerning about the Bucks coming in and being up 25 nothing. But if you take a look at the worst passers in the NFL, rating-wise, you see the young guys. Yeah. I mean, even Sam Darnold is They've come back to 26th. The pack. Uh, Mitchell Trubisky, young guy. Jared Goff, young guy. Baker Mayfield is DAL. Um, uh, Mason Rudolph is down there. Uh, Kyle Allen is down there. Um, so the best, you know, Josh Allen's moved up a little bit. Josh Allen's having a decent year. He's 20th, though. Kyler Murray's 19th. Uh, Gardner Minshew is 17th. So um, you don't see a lot of – Lamar Jackson is the anomaly. Lamar Jackson – And he's doing – I mean, even though he's an improved as a passer and he can pass from the pocket he has, it's it's his running ability that is – Right now, making him the yeah, MVP. Because if you look at his yards <clears throat> thrown for, he's 18th in the league. Correct. You know, but that, and again, I will say this <clears throat> about Jackson. Yes, sir. His running yards seem a little different than some of the other mobile, you know, high, high rushing total quarterbacks from this standpoint. They have designed runs. It's not like he goes back to pass. He's supposed to go through his reads and instead he panics and he leaves. Right. Like he has plays where he goes back in the pocket and he'll read. The difference is when he decides to go, he's a lot harder to grab than probably anyone we've ever seen. There's no question about it. At, so, at the position. Listen, the uh, hot seat awards, not awards, but the hot seat, lukewarm, all that is coming out. And uh, you're going to find Doug Marone on the hottest of the sure. hot seats. I yeah. mean, that's where he is right now. Yeah. It is what it is. Results-oriented business. Uh, he seems hate, resigned to it almost. You hate to see it, but, you know, that's that's where we are. You're 4-8 and eight and you're – you're going to be on the hottest of hot seats, and 
ESPN put out a list, the coaching thermometer, uh, rating job security, and uh, squarely on the hot seat, that's rating four. That's Quinn, that's Garrett, that's Marone, and that's Shermer. I, the- and, and, and the only – somehow I I would feel best about Garrett's chance keeping his job over it, the other ones. Uh, I think I, he's getting fired, but I'm saying of the four, I think he's most likely to keep his job. Yeah. Well, they'd have, if they win four in a row, I guess, and win a playoff. Well, they're going to go to the playoffs. I get it. I mean, here's what happens. You go to the playoffs and just Anything one home upset over Minnesota. And, yeah. You, you know, suddenly your season's not terrible. Um, <clears throat> seat is warm as Kitchens, Patricia, Zimmer, which is I don't, yeah, I, weird. I, that must be a personality conflict or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tensions rose internally. He's been there a while, so they want – expectations, uh, barring a disaster, uh, Nagy, Zach Taylor, Bill O'Brien, Anthony Lynn, Doug Peterson. So I don't, I have, I will say this. We talked yesterday and again, I, we're, we're not having conversations on who the next Jaguars coach would be the, right now that, that the next Jaguars coach is Doug Marone this Sunday. So, yes. but I've completely changed my mind on Ron Rivera. Now you want him. I'm not saying I want him, but you I would be him. 100% fine. Yeah. He's not as old as I thought. He's much more in, Exci- he's he's excited about a new opportunity. Uh-huh. He's one. He's a big time. Di- I will say this, and again, without talking about big time disciplinarian, he'd fit right in if we were going to stay with that same quote mentality you're trying to to you know enforce. So I don't know if that's going to still be the mm-hmm. you know the temperament around here. Um, I watched. Oh, I guess we'll see. I watched one college basketball game last night. Ohio State went into Carolina and beat the Tar Heels. So yeah, I, I I've I, the. the yeah, and beat them good. There might be thirty teams that can win this year. I'm going to yeah. stick by that. What we saw after the first four teams played that night. I think we just... had that feeling last year too, though, and, and it worked that way. It was Virginia, yeah. Texas Tech. Yeah, you know. So yeah. yeah, I think it's another year of not Duke and Kentucky and North Carolina. Michigan and shout State. out, shout out. <clears throat> uh, one college basketball note for you. Shout out to the DePaul Blue Demons. Okay, if you're a DePaul man out there, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. You haven't been to the tournament. You have one of the longest streaks yeah, of being a D one O two maybe 04, or four. Yeah, but they're nine and zero, and they beat Texas Tech last night. Yes, they did. Um, and so a nice good game win. by Mark Aguirre. Great game by Mark Aguirre, and I did not know that uh, Ray Meyer's kid is still coaching. Joey there. Meyer, Joey Meyer, mm-hmm. the head coach. White hair now. I it was kind of like the yeah. Ball. It was. Uh, it was weird. not him at all. By the oh, way, oh, that's not or, him. Yeah, okay. Dallas Comedies though. I thought played a good game. Dallas Comedies. Can you give me one more to ball player? Huh? Was Adrian? No, he was. Uh, Adrian Dantley, Dantley was Notre, Notre Dame. Dame. Yeah, Notre Dame. Uh, yes. There's one more. They had one more. It was a was, choir. Oh, I know who it was. Chicago Kids. Is yeah, they had, uh, didn't they have, um, this guy was good for the, uh, oh gosh, his brother played for the Magic. Uh, Jay Vincent, did he play for? Michigan State. He was Michigan State. That's in my head. Yeah, I, me too. How about George Mikan? That's way too old. I'm How talking about, about like Quentin a, Richardson? Yeah, but there was another one in there. How about that. Terry Cummings? That's the one. He's about, in he, Cummings is in the Aguirre Comedies. I'll give you era. one more. Rod Strickland. Rod Strickland, another one. Could have gotten to him. Those are your DePaul Blue Demons. Well, DePaul the winner last night. And, and those five together, happy. including Mike and inside, could really be something come tournament time. I think you were thinking of Jay Vincent's brother, Jan Vincent from Airwolf. No, Jay, uh, Sam Vincent was the, the, the Celtic and the Magic player. Don't you ever forget of Dave Corzine. Dave Corzine was an ugly man. (laughs) He's not an ugly man. I believe he is. He looks fine. No, I believe he's ugly. Let's take caller number three, Beef. Tell him what they're winning right now. Caller number three right now, 641-1010. Going to make someone's day with a floral delivery from our friends at Kuhn Flowers. 641-1010. Perfect. Nothing wrong with ugly people. Love them.